Hello, and welcome to another edition of Truth and Rhythm, brought to you by FunkinStuff.net. This is the interview show that gets deep in the pocket with contemporary music's foremost masters of the groove. I'm your host, Scott Dr. Jake Goldfine, musicologist and author of Everything's on the One, the First Guide of Funk. If you don't have your copy, get on over to Amazon, pick one up. I'll be most grateful, and hopefully you'll be very satisfied with the book, too. With your watching or listening, as always, I thank you very much for your continued interest and support in the show. Speaking of which, make sure you subscribe. If you haven't already done so, go to YouTube and subscribe to the Funk and Stuff channel. That's F-U-N-K-N-S-T-U-F-F. That's where Truth and Rhythm lives. If you already subscribed, tell a friend, tell a family. We need that support. This episode features a founding member of one of the undisputedly most talented, important, and beloved funk bands of the 1970s and 1980s. I'm talking about Floyd Miller of Dayton, Ohio's Mighty Slave. The group's incredible roster of gifted musicians included bassist Mark Adams, guitarist Mark Hicks, multi-instrumentalist Steve Washington, and drummer-singer Steve Arrington, and guitar player-singer Kurt Jones, both of whom have been on Truth and Rhythm. Miller contributed horns, percussion, and a whole lot more, staying with the group throughout the 1980s, even as many others departed. Slave notched several hit albums with hit songs and deep cuts that included Slide, Just a Touch of Love, Stellar Funk, Just Freak, Volcano Rupture, Watching You, Wait for Me, Stone Jam, Snapshot, Baby Sinister, and Sizzling Hot. Members who left the group went on to additional success with acts like Steve Arrington's Hall of Fame, Aura, and Deja Vu. In this in-depth interview, Miller digs into what made the group so extraordinary, what tore them apart, how several original members are looking to reunite, and tales from the studio, road, and memories, good and not so good. Although not liberty to get into all the sordid details, he definitely conveys the trials and tribulations he and the slave organization have endured, as well as the magic of their creations and love for the fans. All I can say is, don't worry, baby, everything's okay, as we slide on in to this truth and rhythm with Mr. Floyd Miller. I'm so pleased to welcome to the truth and rhythm mothership, horn player, percussionist, and composer, Mr. Floyd Miller, who is a founding member of the stellar funk band of the 1970s and 1980s, Slave. Floyd, how's it going today? So glad to have you with me. Hey, it's a pleasure, man. I'm glad to be here. Uh, I'm glad you uh, that you asked. And uh, I am one of the co-founders of, of the group. You know, you know there's so many of us. And uh, it's just a pleasure, man. I, I'm, I'm glad to be here. Outstanding. Where are you today? Where Where is Floyd Miller today? Um, right now I'm in Ohio. Presently I'm in Ohio. I'm gonna go as far as I'm gonna go right now. Uh, so n near the uh, uh, I'm in Dayton, as a matter of fact, you know, where, where the group originated from. Okay, very, very nice. So, you know, uh, we, we talked uh, offline, but I'm such a huge fan, Floyd from the very beginning when I first heard Slide as a teenager on the little transistor radio at the beach one day during the summer, it just blew my mind. And ever since then, every single record, I was first in line to get it. Sometimes having yeah. to take multiple buses to the record store, you know, down in uh, the inner city of LA because they wouldn't get it right away where I was living. Uh, whatever yeah. it took, I was there to get Slave. I had to get it into my system you know scott man uh uh it's great to hear that coming from you man uh because this is the first time we've ever met and uh whenever i get the chance to to uh, talk to a fan a true fan that knows about the history the group you know and uh you know and, and the music you know has a real love for the music man uh it, it brings me great joy man Great joy. Great joy. Well, we'll talk more about that record in a little bit, but just, uh, wow, that was just uh, burned my brain when I first heard it, and, and I couldn't get enough. So 
and it still stands up. What a classic song that is. So, yes, appreciate it. Um, all right. Well, I want to find out more about your background. So to get rolling, Floyd, uh, could you tell me where are you from originally and how did you first get into music? Where am I from originally? Well, I grew up in a military family. My father was in the Air Force. And uh, we did a lot of traveling across the country. Um, I was born in Anchorage, Alaska. <clears throat> um, but I grew up I grew up here in Dayton, Ohio, and uh, down south in uh, Panama City, uh, back and forth, Panama City, Alabama, and here. Uh, like I said, we we did a lot of traveling. Uh, my father, he was um, in the military, you know, a career military man in the Air Force, and uh, he was a musician also. Uh, he played saxophone and uh, clarinet. That was his main instruments. His brothers and his sisters all played music. Uh, music goes back in my family on my father's side, back like three or four generations that I've been told. <laughs> and... Uh, I'm presently the only one in the family carrying on the music tradition. Um, but it started here in Dayton, Ohio, back in the fourth grade, you know, when, uh, uh, when I was introduced to music in, the, in, in grade school. And my father didn't introduce me to the music. My father and my uncles and my aunties and my grandmother, they didn't introduce me to music, although I was around it. All my life, uh, I was introduced to music to my fourth grade my, by my fourth grade uh, music teacher. And, uh, and as a matter of fact, I owe everything. You know, I mean, I, I owe a lot to this lady right here. You know, and uh, she's the one that that sparked my interest and sparked my creativity. You know, to get into the music. You know, when I first started playing music, I wanted to play drums, <laughs> but uh, she saw past that. She saw that uh, my, uh, what is the word I'm trying to say? I'm, uh, my direction what wasn't the drums, it was a trombone, and it was my main instrument. That was my first instrument, the trombone. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, she saw something in me that I didn't see, and... I will always be grateful to this, to this lady, to this day, <laughs> to this day. But yeah, it all started here in Dayton, Ohio. I think all of us, when we were first starting out, young boys, we wanted to play drums. I know I did too. And then I ended up playing alto sax. And um, my son, who's 14 now, also is playing alto sax. Right. So... When did you first get into, you know, a band and performing in that kind of situation? Um, like I said, uh, I was introduced, introduced to music in the fourth grade. Um, at the same time, I was um, in the track and field, doing a lot of athletics. But the music overtook. <clears throat> music was my uh, was my direction. And uh, um, it uh, actually started back in 71, 72, when uh, I was in a band called The Mystics, the young men, me, myself, uh, Mark Adams, um, Tom Lockett. We were part of this group called The Young Mystics. And uh, for for a long time, then you know, we we did all the the, the nightclubs and the, uh, you know all the uh, all the hot spots, all the uh, parks, all the shows that were going on during the summer. We was a part of it, and uh, uh, we were all underage. Even in the nightclubs when we where we played, we was it was illegal for us to be in these nightclubs, but we was there, and we was. You know, we was out there to entertain the people because that's what we love to do, man. It was the, it was the music, man. And uh, all those, you know, all those months back there, 70, 71, 72, you know, uh, uh, we was inspired, you know, in, you know, uh, the people that inspired us most was, was the heavy rock, uh, like, yes, 
uh, uh, Led Zeppelin, uh, Deep Purple. Uh, did a lot of rock and roll before I got into funk and uh, R&B and stuff like that. Uh, uh, that took me into, uh, 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 well, a lot of us into a Tower Power, George Duke. You remember the, uh, you know, that, that old funk back, back in the days, uh, uh, Weather Report. They were my favorites, Earth, Wind, and Fire. And that's, that's who we listened to back in the day. Uh, Jocko Pistori. Um, uh, you know, they gave us the, insp the inspiration to create our own music, our own sound. And although we, you know, the, uh, we went out um, and did shows in a nightclub to make money, but our main goal was to create our own sound and our own music. And that's what we set out to do. That's what we set out to do. Those are great bands that you named. And, uh, you know, I think you can hear it in the, in the what ultimately became Slave, for sure, all those different influences. But was there any particular uh, person on the instrument that you had chosen that kind of inspired you and you looked up to as far as playing your instrument? <laughs> no. Uh, because uh, I was inspired by a lot of people because I play more than one instrument, you know. Uh, I play all percussions, and uh, uh, I just, I like to do different things, you know. I like to, uh, uh, hey, man, I like I, I like to broaden my, my horizons. I, I, I learn different instruments on how to play them and how to execute them and how to, uh, to um <clears throat> to, to, to uh, put them into my music and all, you know, music that I'm doing right now. Uh, I just, I just love, I love to learn, man. You know, I love to work with my hands and, and I just like to learn new things. Like right now, um, I'm starting to learn how to play the guitar. You know, I'm trying to uh, broaden my horizons as far as music and uh, production. Um, that's about, that's about it, man. That's about that's, it, you know? Yeah, that's awesome that you keep, you know, wanting to learn. I had Jim Gilstrap on this show a while back, and he's, you know, I don't know, 65, 70, and he's just really learning how to play piano now, you know? I mean, and he wants right. to keep, you know, learning more and more, too. So it's it's a never-ending uh, spectrum, you know? Yeah, and and then and being in the music industry, I learned, I taught myself how to play the piano, you know, uh, and all the other instruments that I've learned, I can only read music to like a couple of instruments, the trombone and drums. <laughs> Everything else I taught myself uh, because the, the, uh, the fellows that I worked with, you know, the band, when we came together to, to, uh, to create this sound, we, <clears throat> it's, it's very hard to explain, you know, Scott, you know, when we came together, we we come off the street. We come to come together for rehearsal. Everything else on the outside, we left it out there. When we came in, we came in to create, and we clicked off of everybody. You know, uh, we learned from everybody, and when we came together to put music together, it was it was just magical, man. And uh, uh, we was always on the, you know, on the same page when it came to creating the music, you know, even though we had, we was dealing with nine, 10, sometimes 14 different individual, uh, individuals and different individual creativity levels. When it came to the music, we was one, you know, and that's, that's what, that's what, that's what, uh, that's what, <laughs> that's what did it, man. That's what did it. Well, it's, you can't um, invent that. It has to happen organically, you know. Um, and when it does, it's such a beautiful thing. Yeah. Tell me, uh, Floyd, what was it like coming up in that Dayton, Ohio area, though? I mean, I know it was very competitive with battles of the bands and <clears throat> seemed like there were bass players in every corner. At least that's what I've heard. You know, what was it like being in that yeah. environment? Yeah, that's a good question right there. Because back then, Scott, and you may not believe what I'm about to say, but back then, unlike uh, how competitive the music industry is today, 
It wasn't like that back then, although it was competitive, you know, but it was friendly competition, you know. Every, you know, we had our, 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 our differences and stuff like that. And but when when it came to the battle of the bands and, you know, showcasing <clears throat> our uh, our product, you know, in our music. Everybody gave everybody respect. You know, when it came to uh, uh, them coming, uh, us coming on, on stage, expressing our uh, our show, doing our show, you know, and let the best man win. You know, sometimes, hey, you win, sometimes you lose. But when we came together, it was, it was friendly competition. It was, not, it was none of that. It was none of that negative stuff. Although, you know, you're going to have negative negativity in the music industry and jealousy, you know. It, it, it was it was it's there and it's always there and it's it's more prominent now than than ever but back then man you know everybody man we we, we gave everybody everybody respect whether you was good or whether you wasn't we we, we gave everybody a respect to, to uh express yourself you know and and that's what that's what music is all about on top of going out there and entertaining the people making them a part of the show that you try to, mm, that you're putting together, make them a part of it, you know, bring them into it, you know. That's 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 what it's about, man. Uh, entertainment, keeping it, you know, keeping it alive, man. Keep that funk alive, man. That's that's what that's what it's all about. And and the main thing with us, with Slave, it was <clears throat> it wasn't about going out there and learning all about, you know, learning the top forty hits. And the tops, you know, we did that. We knew how to do that. But we wanted to create our own sound. And we concentrated on that. And everybody that was involved knew that. And we put in a lot of hours, a lot of days, a lot of months putting that together, bro. You know, I just want that to be, I want that to be known. Everybody that was involved, every last one of them, we put in some work, bro. It took a lot of work, a lot of time, a lot of rehearsal, you know, and I'll never forget it, man. I'll never forget it. Steve Washington, Danny Webster, you know, uh, the originals, Tim Dozier, Boy and Will. Hey, we were cut off for a bit. We're back here with uh, Floyd Miller talking about Slave, uh, the band first got rolling and just the amazing talent that was part of that group. Floyd? Yeah. Um, like in the beginning, when, uh, when we first got together, you know, we, uh, we were doing shows all over Dayton, Ohio, uh, Battle of the Bands, talent shows, you know, expressing our, 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 our art. And, um, <clears throat> When we when we got together, we didn't want to go out do doing shows, you know, nightclubs and, and stuff like that, because we spent most of our time, you know, with the Mystics and, and the other groups, uh, Black Satin Soul, playing all the uh, the nightclubs uh, around town and around uh, the tri-state. And we wanted to do something different. We wanted to uh, create our own sound and our own our own path. And that's what we did when we first got together. We stayed in the basement, you know, when everybody else was out there in the streets, you know, you know, uh, having fun, doing whatever they did. We stayed in the basement and uh, we stayed off the streets. We concentrated on our sound and our music, you know, our image. And, uh, you know, we had nine different individual personalities, creative uh, flows. But when we came together, it was it was like we was one. You know, when we came down in the basement or, or the house or wherever we was at, you know, we put everything else outside, you know. And when when we came to put the music together, it was all positive. It was all about the music, you know, even though we was all going through, you know, our personal uh, struggles and stuff like that. When we came together to do the music, you know, it was one for all and all for one. <laughs> and uh, that's what. Oh, uh, man, that's what I, I loved about the group, because when we came together, it didn't matter if, you know, if one person wrote a song or three per people wrote the song in the beginning, 
we all got credit. Even though they didn't uh, uh, write the song, but everybody's contribution, it helped to build and make the sound that we that we do that we know, uh, know today and what uh, these fake groups is trying to steal. You know, uh, we worked hard to get that sound and to uh, and, and make it ours. And, and people who, who, who never went, who never recorded an album, never, never uh, did a show, you know, to take what we built and just just trash it like they're doing. It's just it's 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 a travesty, man. And, well, we, and um, we we haven't really I gotten just, into, uh, we haven't really got into that yet to the current day. We will we'll work our way there and talk more about that. But um, right, Floyd. Who who were the? Uh, can you name all those guys that were there at the, the very beginning? In the very beginning, it was Tim Dozier, Carter Bradley, Ray Turner, Danny Webster. Orion Wilhoy, Tom Lockett, Mark Adams, uh, 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 Mark Hicks, and Steve Washington. That was that was the initial group in the beginning. And, and to tell you the truth, when we had our first our first meeting, it was only six of us. It was me, uh, Floyd Miller, uh, Mark Adams, Lockett. We was from the Mystics, and we met up with uh, Mark Hicks. Steve Washington and Tim Dozier, they were part of Black Satin Soul. And we decided to come together to form one group. And uh, our first, the first initial meet, you know, we, we practiced like, we had a good two weeks before everybody else started coming in. Uh, uh, Carter Bradley, Danny Webster, Orion Will Hoyt, you know, they all came after the initial six came together and we decided that we was going to make this a, a band. And then everybody else started coming along uh, afterwards. Uh, how, how did you guys get uh, the record deal that would lead to that first album? Ha, boy, oh boy. Leading up to that, we were all here in Dayton, Ohio. We were working on our 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 album, our music. And um, when we first had our project, got our project together, uh, uh, we presented it to the Ohio players, who Steve Washington was the nephew of Pee Wee, the trumpet player for the Ohio players. So we gave them first crack at it. They turned us down. They didn't want to, they didn't want to, they didn't want to do anything with us. So what we did, <clears throat> we left Dayton went to New Jersey and hooked up with a program director uh, of a radio station in New Jersey called WNJR, uh, Jeff Dixon. That was our first manager. Uh, it was presented to him. And when he heard and saw what we were doing, he took us in the studio. And uh, that's where the first album came, came apart. We did our first album in New Jersey. Did, were the Ohio players yet working with Faso at that point, or was it after that? You're breaking up, man. I, I didn't hear that. I said, uh, I was wondering, um, can you, can you uh, understand me now? Yeah. The timing-wise, the Ohio players ended up working with Faso. Was that before or after they declined Slave? After. Hmm. It was after. Huh. It was after. <laughs> Yeah. So um, Jeff Dixon uh, got you guys all set up, and <clears throat> what was it like recording that first that first album? What was it like? Yeah, yeah. What was it? It was it was unbelievable, man. It was our first time ever being in a, a, a professional recording studio. We were all young, man. We uh, most of us were still in high school. And, uh, you know, when we was introduced into this world, we had no idea what we was getting into, man. You know, all we wanted to do was play music, entertain the people, have a good time. And, uh, uh, you know, we wasn't even, we wasn't concerned or, or thinking about the business like we should have been. And, uh, you know, 
it was just it was it was a great time, man. It was a great time. Did did the, the record end up being you know everything you had hoped and wanted it to be when it finally came out? Yes, it did. You know, when we first when we uh, completed the album, we knew we had something. We didn't know how big it was, but everybody in the group, everybody that was involved in that project, we felt real strong about it. And uh, when it was released, we had no idea it was going to make the uh, the impact that it did. We had no idea. It took us totally by surprise. How, how did how did you guys come up with that slide groove? <laughs> slide was created in New Jersey at uh, uh, Steve Washington's parents' house in their in their uh, living room. We were all there in the house rehearsing. You know, we wanted to come up with uh, uh, some. We was coming up with some new tracks and. You know, man, this is this is a trip because I don't think anybody I don't think we've ever even said, you know, how slide was created. But slide was created from a bottle of 151 rum. <laughs> Everybody took a shot and then we all commenced to start at rehearsing, you know, practicing, you know, coming up with this line. Mark came up with the bass line. Uh, uh, Tim Dozier with the drums, me with the horns. Uh, and me, Danny, me and Danny Webster with the vocals. And uh, a slide was created in Steve Washington's parents' living room. The whole, the whole thing, 76. Well, actually, slide, slide was, was, was created in that, uh, at, at, at that house. Everything else was, was done at our rehearsal hall. Uh, every uh, all the music on that album was done at our rehearsal hall, but uh, our first initial it, it was done at, at, at 208 North Maple <laughs> in New Jersey, East Orange, New Jersey. That's where Sly was created. Wow! How did you um, come up with like the bicycle horn, and you know who came up with that idea? And well, the bicycle horn, yeah, all the extra stuff that came with it, it, it was just, we were all just, I, I can't explain it. It just came together, man. Uh, uh, me and uh, Steve Washington uh, on the percussion, we wanted to uh, take the song to a different level, you know, and, 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 and introduce different instruments. Uh, Ah, man, I just can't explain that, Scott. It's just it's just something that just came together, man. It just came together, you know? <laughs> well, it, it came together. It, it came I, together. When we first started talking in this interview, um, you know, I talked about how when I first heard that track, it just blew me away. And I had Steve Arrington on this show. I don't know if you've caught that interview, but um, he talked about, I think, um, I don't know if it was Steve Washington or one of the guys played him that song over the phone or something like that. I think he said, and he was just floored when he first heard it too. He said, and it's like nothing else anyone had really ever heard at that point. Right. Um, that's when we knew that uh, all the work that we was doing in in uh, in the basement, you know, all that practices, it, it it paid off. When uh, when we came up with those tracks, we knew we was on the right track, man. We and we just we just. Took it from there, man. You know, we just clicked off for each other. Uh, when we come together to rehearse, like I said, man, we put everything else on the outside, keep it on the outside. When we come in to rehearse, we come in to create. And uh, it was just, it was, it, it was just magical. It was just magical, man. I can't explain it any more than that. It was a magical thing. Well, even though the Ohio players took a pass, um, their influence was still pretty heavy on that record. I mean, screw your wig on tight, definitely had some of that yes. Ohio players flavor. Yes, yes. I mean, as a matter of fact, when we was on uh, putting together the music, we did a lot of Ohio player songs uh, in our show. Uh, um, Ohio players, Earth, Wind and Fire, Mandrill, they were our, uh, we used them as our theme song. Uh, Mandrill, Tower Power, we played all those uh, high powered aggressive songs. You know, we loved that funk. 
And uh, that's what drove us, man. That's what drove us. So you guys were just, you guys were still just kids, and all of a sudden, you know, your song was on the radio every hour, and uh, money was rolling in. But you were naive to all that part of it, unfortunately. Um, but how did your life change, if at all? You know, once that became successful. Uh, man, it 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 changed our life tremendously, man. Um, we was, uh, you know, we were we we were in school, you know, just going by our daily lives, and then all of a sudden we're thrusted into the uh, the entertainment uh, uh, world, you know, full force, you know. And uh, uh, as a matter of fact, when when we when we was um, when we went on the road, the record company just threw us out there. When the album came out, it was such a uh, success that the record company they had to get us out there to perform it. And it was, it was all overwhelming, man. It all came, came real fast, kind of too fast. And, uh, you know, it's, it was a wild ride, uh, Scott, man. That's all I could say. It was a wild ride. Who were some of the uh, groups that you went out with to first tour with? Um, when we first went out, uh, we, we went on tour with uh, Average White Band, Wild Cherry, hmm. Cool in the Gang, Commodores, um, Cameo, uh, you know, Mass Production, you know, Al Hudson and, and One Way, Bar Caves. We played with everybody. <laughs> I mean, everybody. We was on just about everybody's show. The only only tour that we wasn't on was the Solar Tour, you know, Um you remember when Solar was out, uh, Shalimar, Lakeside. Uh, the Whispers, Lakeside. Yeah, we wasn't on that circuit. We was, we was with, mainly, we was with Al, Al Heyman and on that circuit. So, uh, you know, Gap Band, we, we, we did a lot of shows. Santana, uh, we did two shows with Marvin Gaye. It, 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 it was unbelievable, man. It was great. Did, did you guys take that sort of battle of the bands mentality you had? from your roots and take that on the road? Well, not only did we take that out on the road, but we flipped it around, you know. Uh, uh, when we go come on stage, we, we want to entertain the people. We wanted to make them a part of our show, you know, and that was our, that was our goal, you know. I mean, take that aggression and, and, and give it to the people and, and, and all the energy that they gave us you know, it made our show that much better. Even though, even when we had bad shows, it was great. It was great. <laughs> what, what do you think was about um, that group of, of guys, you know, that you had that kind of chemistry to create that kind of musical magic? I mean, what was the vibe? What was in the air? It's just uh, something you can't describe or you guys had a brotherhood? Well, what was it? Scott, we was hungry. We was hungry. We wanted our own name and our own identity, and we was going to do it by any means necessary. We was hungry, man. You know, so we focused, and uh, and we just did it. we just did it, man. And do you remember any TV appearances uh, off that first record? Um, our first TV appearance was nineteen eighty. Soul Train, Don Kirshner's Rock Concert. Those were the only times we was ever on TV. Oh, so it took a little while. It TV. took a while. Yeah. 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 So so after that success, did you guys just really have to uh, kind of put out the next record before you were ready? Or did you feel like you were on top of things going into the, the next record? Well, when the first album came out, it went gold so fast that the uh, – the record company threw us back in the studio to do that second album. It was rushed. Uh, it was, oh man, it was, it, we was on, I mean, we, we was on uh, the line. I mean, they, they was putting us, they was rushing us to do stuff, you know, because, uh, because the music was so strong and uh, you know, there was a time where we, we couldn't keep up with the demand. 
because the music was so strong. And, uh, you know, we would do an album, we come out of the studio, we go on tour, then we would have to turn around and go back into the studio to uh, put out more material to keep, to keep our fans, <clears throat> you know, interested. You know what I'm saying? And it, it was hard. It was hard work, man. It was a lot of hard work. You know, there were days where, where we would spend three, four days in the studio in rehearsal just practicing. We spent days, hours practicing because we, we felt that strong about the music.